Hello, it's Debbie Gilbert from the Business Awards Show, and I'm also the owner of the Best Business Women Awards. And today I am joined by Tonya Galati from TG Consulting Limited, who are an educational consultancy. Tonya is the founder and director of this business, and she is also the very proud winner of the Best New Business category in the Best Business Women Awards 2021. And Tonya is going to share some lovely information about her business, her background, and we're also going to chat a bit about awards today. So welcome, Tonya. Thank you, Debbie. How are you? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> so new business. Um, so I think it might be quite useful to understand what were you doing before you set up the business and also share a bit about the business and tell people all about it. Okay, so uh, before I set the business, uh, I'd say I didn't really have a particularly linear career, uh, never really knew what I wanted to do, so I did a variety of things, uh, worked in export, worked for a professional body, and then found my dream uh, role, I guess, within higher education, um, and I was working for a post-92 university where I worked my way up and became head of careers, focusing on the employability and social mobility agenda, uh, and then I took voluntary redundancy from that after a period of time and uh, went and worked for another professional body where I was focused on employability engagement. So um, supporting young people has always kind of been a passion and something I've enjoyed doing. Um, the business, which will be two years old, uh, February 22nd, um, is essentially an education consultancy. Our clients are universities, colleges, and then corporate organizations and small businesses. And our focus is employability, social mobility, and student engagement. So we work with our clients to help them um, build confidence and raise aspirations amongst students or from the employer side, help them think about different ways to engage talent in their recruitment processes, or help them to, you know, from a SME perspective, is help them to think about how they can use um, interns and graduates as part of their business model, rather than feeling that that's uh, an untapped area that they can support. So over the last couple of years, um, what have been the biggest challenges that you've come up against? Well, uh, the biggest challenge I say is the business was set up literally two weeks before the UK went into lockdown because of the pandemic. <laughs> So I think that's been the biggest challenge and it was completely unexpected. Um, so the business has been operational, literally with the members of the team I've never even met. Um, so everyone's working from home, which in itself is, has been really difficult. Uh, and some members of the team obviously, you know, need that kind of level of interaction. So I think that's been a challenge. Um, what's also been a challenge is obviously the, the normal income streams we would have uh, gotten via institutions and colleges. Obviously, they were the first things to shut down when COVID hit. So what we've had to do is think about creative ways to kind of remain current, keep our brand kind of uh, front and foremost in the eyes of individuals and just kind of keep growing, which we've managed to do. Actually, we've got a really creative team. We try anything and everything. Um, and we're happy to kind of push boundaries and things, which means that we've been able to carve a niche for ourselves. Um, and what we've also done in the last two years is we've taken on 74 paid student interns to work as part of the business. So they've helped us to grow and kind of shape things and create solutions for clients where we're basically, we've got, you know, we're creating these solutions with the target market. So it's kind of tried and tested. We know that this solution to engage students as X is going to work because we've created it with students. Yeah. So we've really been able to, you know, it's we've gone in a completely different direction to what I thought we would go in, but everything happens for a reason. And I've, it's been really positive two years, all in all. And I guess that's quite energising, working with younger people. Do you find that quite energising? I find it energizing. Uh, it makes me, I guess it forces me to be positive all the time because, you know, you've got to keep them positive. You've got to keep the momentum going, the pace. Um, it means that we actually have really great conversations. You know, we have a laugh. Um, they, you know, they keep me in check. So I might be like, oh, I've got a great idea. And they're like, no, Tony, that's not cool at all. <laughs> they're okay, we won't do that. Um, so yeah, it's been really, really great. And actually, you know, it's what I'm passionate about. So to be surrounded by so much great talent all the time is what, you know, it's my motivation every day, really. So what sort of ideas are they coming up with? 
quite interested to know. Uh, well, we've just announced the release of our second book, which has got 50 chapters in, all written by a young person who's overcome challenge, adversity and oh. barriers. And that's been basically a product that has been led by our student interns. It's our second book. It's going to be published worldwide. So from the 15th of March, it'll be available in Waterstones, um, et cetera. And it's called The Truth Behind the Filter. So they've brought that to life. Um, so they've done that. We've got a student who leads on our podcast series, The Student Sessions, which was shortlisted for a British Podcast Award last year. We've had 9,000 downloads in 18 months. What's um, the name of the podcast? The Student Sessions. Student Sessions. Um, and yeah. it's aimed at students to listen. It's aimed at students, yeah, uh, regardless of where they're in their career, but it's got, you know, once about to start series four. But series three was all around role models. So, you know, this whole um, thought process that actually there's certain individuals that don't necessarily have access to the role models they need because of the lack of social capital. So we've had great individuals on there that are role models that anyone could listen to. Um, series two was focused on interviewing students at university or college to talk about uh, some of their challenges, things like time management, why it's important to a placement, that sort of thing. And then series one, because it happened just as lockdown started and we thought we're going to be locked down for three weeks. We thought, oh, we'll do something to kind of help people stay connected. And it was very much around, you know, the themes of how to stay motivated, feelings of isolation. What can you do? So something that started off that was supposed to be like a three week project. Two years later, you know, it's generating revenue we've created podcasts for clients as well now so it's an additional thing or additional string to our bow but it's all been kind of with the students that work within the team so what do you think that their main worries and concerns are that sort of generation the student generation currently um well the, the students that we work with many of them are from low socioeconomic backgrounds so their concerns are that pre-pandemic you know, it was really challenging to get a job. There was a lot of competition. And now their concerns are that there are fewer opportunities and therefore even more competition. Um, I think they're also concerned about um, potentially the lack of opportunities for them. So when I think about some of the creative students that we work with, many of them say that actually a lot of the internships they want to apply for are still unpaid, which puts them at a disadvantage because they can't afford to do unpaid internships. So... I think there's this fear of, you know, the experience, which has always been a fear, I guess, but I think that's grown. Um, but also the new ways of working. So a lot of employers now have this kind of hybrid model, don't they, of kind of working at, in the office, sometimes working at home. And I think that is the unknown uh, mm. for a lot of students. So I think for some of them, it's, God, how am I going to adapt to that environment? How can I seek support and all that sort of stuff that if you were full time in an office, you wouldn't feel like that because you'd have someone checking in on you. Are you okay? Have you got enough work to do? Whereas I think there's, there's a lot of the people that we work with when they're working from home, there's this fear of like, oh God, I'm just sitting here. I don't have a presence. How do I create a presence? So if there's an employer listening to this uh, podcast, what, um, what should they be doing? I mean, what could they actively do to support these young people? Well, I think when you're recruiting young people into the business, I think often it's thinking about actually the support they have at university or college almost needs to be replicated in the workplace so if you think about it when students are studying they have pastoral care they have they could, they've got a disability team who can support them there's university counseling mm. there's different mechanisms set up to support them through their student journey and it's almost like when they go into the workplace that support stops so from a development perspective and a confidence perspective they almost lose that so I think it's thinking about you know, what's the continuation there? How can students feel supported as they enter the workplace and progress? So, you know, mentors and buddies are always great things, you know, making sure that the student or the intern is clear on what is my role here and how does that feed into the overall strategy? I think when someone knows how their contribution are in, is impacting the business, that makes, makes it clear in terms of, right, I know what I'm doing. Uh, we have a setup where, you know, obviously everyone has a manager, but we also have project teams so that people are working cross-functionally. And it's kind of, you know, I might be speaking to a group of people on Monday, but actually on Wednesday, I'm now moving and working in a different project. Yeah. So it's just ensuring that that team approach is there and that that individual therefore feeds, feels fully supported by the team rather than relying, relying on one person. Mm, that's really, really good advice. And that makes an awful lot of sense. Um, 
so when we're now going to go on to talking a little bit about awards because uh, it is the business awards show yes. so in terms of awards what was your th thought process behind entering awards what was the reason you decided to do it well i've always been a big advocate of awards particularly awards that recognize teams and organizations because actually i think that recognition is quite a motivational thing to have and i think it's important to get that recognition um you know in terms of this business my team work really really hard and often i don't think they necessarily get the recognition because we're not operating at the moment at that level where we've got an extensive amount of exposure um, so partly is that the other part is somebody said to me when I was setting the business that they said, you know, the key to getting clients in and kind of remaining current is this, you know, if you enter awards, obviously it's kind of a tick that you're doing things well of high quality. So that's kind of the uh, motivations for that twofold. So last year, you obviously won our best new business award, which is a great accolade to have. Um, anything else that you did last year in terms of awards? So we won the uh, National Undergraduate Employability Awards for Best Small Employer. Um, we were shortlisted for the Best Podcast Awards for Best Interview. Uh, we were shortlisted for Best Startup with Forward Ladies. One of our Kickstarters, so we've had 14 Kickstarters through the government funded programme. Uh, Lizzie won Kickstarter of the month. And then um, we've been shortlisted for four more awards that we'll find out about later next month. So again, we've been shortlisted for National Undergraduate Employability Awards. Uh, we've got two entrants there, the Kingston Borough Business Awards for Best Startup and the UK Business and Innovation Awards for Best New Business. So quite a few awards events. Um, but yeah, I mean, even just to be shortlisted, I think it's just, it's just really great. It's nice to be recognised. Um, yeah, across different areas, really. And you've gone for that strategy, which I always talk about, actually, which is local, national, industry, yeah. and looking at, I think you've really honed down at the moment that actually being recognised as a business for Best New Business is actually a great accolade to have. And also having that industry recognition and putting those two together um, definitely will help you win more clients, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, and what sort of clients do you work with? Who are you looking to connect with? Um, well, we're looking to connect really with kind of institutions, you know, universities, colleges, but also large corporates mm -hmm. uh, are particularly uh, a good area for us because we know that there's a push on um, the social mobility agenda. We know because of Black Lives Matter, there's an increased push to kind of increase this sense of belonging uh, that many students from a uh, Bain background have said, actually, I don't feel like I belong. Um, and working with some of these organisations to ensure that their recruitment um, processes are fit for purpose and don't create barriers mm. and that actually those within the organization are representative of the future workforce which for many large corporates they're not mm. and what's the plans for 2022 well uh the plans are <laughs> I mean, uh so many things obviously the book's going live so we want to make that a success hopefully we'll get a call from the one show or something i don't know um we want to scale up so we've been uh all working from home over the last two years so we're potentially looking at premises um and running some more of our large scale programs so we've got a seven week virtual program that we run uh to build confidence and raise aspirations among students we've got some really great inspirational speakers booked there as well so we want to benefit as many young people as possible uh, whilst also obviously generating the income that we need to keep the business going and growing fantastic and if anyone's listening to this thinking oh i've just i've not long set up my business i'm thinking about entering awards what would your advice be to them and what tips would you give them to approach it i think my advice would be pr and anything PR related is the key to keeping your business kind of in people's minds and or entering awards is part of that PR thing. Um, I always used to think it was really cringy nominating for an award, especially, <laughs> yeah, especially those individual awards where it's, you know, for you. And I used to hate that. And I was like, oh, no, I don't want to do that. It's all about the team. But actually, it's really important that you as an individual get recognition as well, because it almost gives you that 
not approval, I hate that because we shouldn't seek approval from anyone, but it almost gives you that kudos and that, you know, the credentials almost that you're doing something well. So I think do it, the more you do it, the less cringe it is. And actually I have someone who writes my awards, so I don't even have to think about it. Uh, and she's just got the green light to write what she likes really about me. <laughs> Tonya, it's about credibility. And I That's think you being <laughs> the winner of best new business, best business woman, it gives you that credibility in the marketplace and you're the leader of your business. So yeah. whilst it is cringy, I totally agree, but actually it's a necessity, I think, to have both, to have team awards as well as you being recognised for what you, you know, what you've achieved um, because ultimately you've pulled the whole thing together. Yeah. I know we can't do it without a team, but you're the driving force behind that team. So yeah. don't forget that. Um, been an absolute pleasure to talk to you today. Um, Thank you, Debbie. You know, Thanks for inviting so me. So much enthusiasm for what you do, and uh, it really comes across when I listen to you talking about it. You're so passionate, clearly, and we need those champions for that younger generation um, because it's tough. It's very tough, and I think they have it. I mean, I'm a lot older than you, but you know, when I left school in the 1980s, um, the opportunities were oh, I mean, there was so much. Um, but I think now that we've narrowed the opportunities down and it is more tough, far more tough. I've got a son who graduates next year and uh, I worry about what he's going to do next. So it's great that there's organisations like you out there supporting and championing these Thank young people. You. So thanks for joining me and Thank I look forward to watching your journey. So Thank, Thank you, Tonya. Thank you. Thank you.